Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scipio. I am playing on a server called Vergecraft. It's run by a technology website known as The Verge. And today I'm going to be showing you guys a uh, project that we've been working on called the Oceana Super Pyramid. Now, Oceana is a giant pyramid that functions as an arcology. So, it is completely self-sustaining, or it can be, you don't have to, but basically what you can do is live there and not have to leave, ever. So it's kind of a nice little piece of land to live on. Actually, I have to grab a minecart, so give me a second, I'll be right back. Alright guys, back. I got my minecart. so. Let's head over to the mirror bin that I was telling you guys about. Whee! Ow. Alright. Do 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 do. So this is Oceana Grand Central or not Oceana. This is uh, the Grand Central Station of the Vergecraft. And it's where everybody starts out, regardless of your status or title or ability in Minecraft. So, just to tell you guys a little bit about the pyramid, um, the idea came from a senior editor of The Verge, his name is Paul Miller. He, I'm assuming, uh, got the idea from the Japanese arcology conception that's supposedly going to go over the Tokyo Bay one day, and it was supposed to be two miles by two miles with a square base and a full pyramid. And it was going to be completely self-sustaining. They were going to have their own energy farms and stuff like that. Um, and Paul saw that and sort of got the idea from that. And wanted to originally make it full-scale in Minecraft on the server. But because we can't make stuff that are quite one mile high yet, um, he scaled it down. So we are building it to be 400 by 400 blocks. Um, and about 200 blocks tall, I think. And it'll have things like a tree farm, a food farm, smelting place, places to store resources, as well as living spaces for the inhabitants of the pyramid to completely settle down and set their um, home base, so to speak. So, yeah. He ended up contacting a couple of the moderators on the server to get the project started. Um, I think Connor Turnbull, um, TFXR, and Tall were some of the first guys on the project, and we've been working diligently now for um, working on six weeks now. The pyramid dedication first opening, grand opening day, is this weekend on Saturday, May the 19th, I believe, because today is Thursday the 17th. So Friday's the 18th? Yes, my math is correct. I feel smart. Um, so yeah, the trip will be a little while longer, so I'm going to cut the video here, and I'll check back with you guys as we approach the pyramid. Alright guys, we are currently approaching the pyramid. Um, we are approaching by way of the replica of the Golden Gate Bridge and it's clearly made out of red wool and wooden fence posts and it is one of the um, features, big features of the pyramid that were driven home and sort of one of the uh, really like title features I guess. So we're rolling in here to Oceana Grand Central. It's the receiving end of Verge City Grand Central. We're getting a bit of lag here. Hold on. Lag, lag, laggy, lag. Right. Um, but yeah. It was recently completed, just the other day. Um, and it has terminals coming into it from Verge City, going back out to Verge City, and also to a place called Sealand, which has been a target of a lot of griefing lately, for reasons unbeknownst to most of the server. We're still trying to figure out who's been doing it, but it's still a work in progress. So, 
Guys, welcome to Oceana. This is the first look by YouTube, except for the capping ceremony, which was filmed a week and a half ago by Entogy. But yeah, this is the first look by a lot of the people who have just recently been whitelisted on the server. So we go out here through departures. We head up through this little circular terminal here. Um, first thing that you'll notice is the color of wool hanging up above each doorway. Each one is for a cardinal direction on the compass. White is for north, like the North Pole, because it's white. West is like the red of the setting sun. Blue is south, which I like to think of it as south blue from one piece. Don't know why, but it, yeah. And this is east. Green is east. So I helped put that up along with TFXR, one of the, I guess you could call him the foreman of the project, as well as Defender Crash. So yeah. Um, I think we will head up through one of these elevators first, and I will see you guys up there. Now, as we're heading up and you look down, you can see two of the features that I mentioned. One is the legitimate farm, which is right there. It is the source of Oceana's food, as well as clothing, I guess, if you want to consider wool a good source of clothing. And right there on the other side of that tunnel is the forest, where people can gather as much wood as they need as long as they replant. and hopefully bone meal it, otherwise they can just replant and hope nature takes its course. And on our way down, we will revisit those so I can talk more about them. But here we are at the top. This is the top level of the pyramid, level E. It is the home of what will be known as Club Disco, which is, as it stated, as it's in its name, a club which I guess is where parties are going to be held, where a bunch of people can gather and jump around and hit guard a bunch and crouch, but and just do stupid Minecraft stuff. But I'm not really sure what this guy is doing. His name is the Sparksy. Uh, the, that's the capstone that I mentioned earlier. It's made completely out of diamond blocks, I think. That is neat. It looks like he is making it move across. So it's going to light up and be a bunch of flashing lights is, I think, the plan that he's come up with. And it's on all four sides. Again, this is level E. It's going to be completely lit up, and it's Club Disco. So level E is made up of four nodes, four tunnels, and one sub-pyramid, which means the, it's the smallest part of the entire pyramid. What I'm standing in now is what's known as a node. It's a semi-spherical object, semi-spherical structure, um, building, I guess, that has the capability to hold 12 entryways and exits. So you have your four tunnels on each of the cardinal directions, as well as eight diagonals, or um, off, off, horizontal off horizontal tunnels that can go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and up, totaling for, like I said, 12 entries and exits. So we head down to this first diagonal here, going down, lag, sorry, um, first, um, first diagonal, level D of Oceana. So here we are. Level D is a 2x2 two two level which means it has four sub-pyramids within it, as well as, I guess, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes, as well as all the tunnels connecting it. So right now there is nothing in level D. Um, everything that's going in level D is part of the master plan and the master plan means that not anybody can settle down in here it has a specific use whether it be something like a farm I'm not sure where the signs there something like a farm or certain functions like a spleef arena which we do have one 
I'm not sure where it is. It's on level B, which we'll get down there in a little bit. But there are two master plan spots on level D that haven't been taken up yet, but the other two will be used for VIP housing, which is for all the important people like the senior editor Paul that I mentioned or probably moderators on the server, as well as, I, I'm guessing, prevalent people who helped with the project and everything like that. So here we are, down to level C. Again, east, south, and west. North isn't because we are on the edge of the pyramid, on the outside edge. But right now, um, level C does not have that much right now. I don't think it has anything right now. It will have four residential areas, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Um, that's something of note. All of the um, living areas, the living spaces for anybody to build things are after the uh, phonetic alphabet recognized by, by NATO. The Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India, Juliet, uh, H, I, J, K, K is Kilo, and so on. And that is how all the living spaces have been named. Here, I'll show you these signs here. See, you got, well, no, there aren't any there, sorry. Uh, no. I'll show you guys in a little bit, but um, here is the forest that I told you guys about. Like I said, you have to replant if you chop down a tree. Um, eventually, the forest will have every type of tree in Minecraft in it. Currently, it doesn't. It only has oak trees, birch trees, and the uh, evergreens, but there is a spot. It's in here, um, right here. Rainforest type trees here-ish means that there will be eventually the jungle trees planted right here, as well as the other three trees. So that's our forest. It's also going to be, I guess, a source of fuel for the pyramid because the wood can be converted to coal. Um, hitting lag. I'm sorry. Normally, don't get this much lag. It's just because we're around the pyramid, which because a lot of this stuff is redstone using it causes a majority of a good majority of lag on the server whenever somebody's close to it so here we are this is the library for the server it's going to have the enchanting areas for everybody in here and it's going to be done by types of books and i can't sprint because i'm really hungry so i'm going to eat this is the restricted area. I'm guessing it's inspired by Harry Potter. It's going to have a lot of books. This might be where the enchanting table goes. Not quite sure yet. But it has a bunch of passageways going around it. It was built by uh, Nicole. Um, clay, birchwood, and it will have bookshelves. The bookshelves currently, though, are in this little storage hut here. The villager bunker as well as the library resource hut. Uh, all these chests, not all of them, some of them are locked, but as you can see we have a lot of wood, a lot of leaves, no donations currently, um, no glass, no donations. But yeah, all that stuff is closed right now, or locked right now. I'm guessing because she doesn't want anybody to steal it. So that's what we have here. Um, actually, yeah. And that's another thing of note about the pyramid. It's been done completely by hand. There has been no creative used in it whatsoever. So everything you see around you has been either smelted or mined by hand using the resources that were available to us at the beginning. So here we have the, um, it's a place known as Tall's Machinations, which is... Um, a place where we can generate a lot of our resources, like a cobblestone generator, a sand generator. Um, there's an obsidian generator over there, as well as a quickly harvested wood maker thing, mabar. So here's our cobblestone generator, which has actually been converted to a smooth stone generator. Um, because with the silk touch pick, with a silk touch pick you can harvest the smooth stone as it is, as opposed to having it be cobble. 
So this is like a 12 by 14 cobble slash smoothstone generator. So what you have to do, you just take a pick, you mine it, mine as much as you want, and then you go over here, you hit the switch, and it reforms. But like the sign says, if you don't turn it off, it'll break. So yeah, don't leave it on. But it all refills quickly because of a bunch of piston work and redstone stuff that goes on in there. So this is our sand generator. It's based on a glitch. I'm not going to show you how it works because it probably would lag me and possibly crash my computer. So I'm not going to do that. But you stand on the pressure plate in there and you can get a good five stacks in about 10 seconds. So it's a pretty handy thing, especially since we use so much glass here in the pyramid. This is our resource, um, not really a resource hut, it's a resource center. It's where everything is stored to build the pyramid and kind of where everybody can go, grab a snack, gather resources, and then go out and build again. Um, there are three levels to it. One is dedicated to glass, one is dedicated to smooth stone, because we use so much of both building the pyramid. So, um, actually, Paul, um, ah. see, um, what I was just checking there is what the guy, what the people on the server were saying about Paul. And the thing about Paul is, uh, Paul ended up leaving the internet. He gave up the internet for, I think, a year, for reasons unbeknownst to me. And since this was his idea, a lot of the people have sort of been trying to keep him up to date with the progress. So that's what they were just talking about there. Um, this person, Sarah, who's been heavily active in the pyramid, is, I guess, showing him something lately. And they're showing him a picture of the park, which I um, helped with. So I'm going to show you guys that once I show you guys the farm. And we're lagging again. But yeah, we um, all miss Paul, so if Paul ever gets a way to see this, um, we've all been working diligently, all in your honor. Well, no, we're partially doing it because we love Minecraft. But yeah, we're doing it for you, partially. So, yeah. This is our resource hut. It used to be full of resources, but now it's not because everything is being moved to the other one, which I guess I'm going to have to show you guys now. So... Um, I think we'll go this way. Head. No. Let's check our signs here. I think if we go this way and then turn left. No. We need to turn right, I believe. Yes. This is the right way, I hope. Please don't blame me if I'm wrong. It's a pretty complex structure. There are uh, 64, yep, see I was wrong. 64 plus 25, nope, not 64. Uh, 36 plus 25 plus 16 plus um, four, yes, four, nope. 16 plus nine plus four plus one different uh, levels, different sub pyramids. So it's quite a lot. This is the farm that you guys saw from Oceana Grand Central over there. And it has plenty of sheep that we uh, sheared for the purpose of the directional wool. Here's where we store a lot of the stuff for the farm. Here's our sugarcane, reeds, whatever you want to call them, generator farm. This is the melon farm where we can get a lot of quick food. Although nobody really likes melon anymore because there's so much of it. So I'm going to gather that real fast because I'm running low. So there we go. This is our melon farm. And then there's also a wheat farm right here. I'm not going to show you guys because I've recorded this episode, this uh, introduction to Oceana, twice already and I've not replanted either time. So basically what you do is flip this switch and the light goes out. You open up the door and everything kind of just pops off. 
and you can just go in and gather and then replant with the seeds that you have. So it's really handy. See, lots of seeds, because nobody wants the seeds. Um, so that's this section. Not sure what that is. I'm going to go check this out. This might be... What is this? Why is there a sheep? I don't know why there's a sheep. Um, this is, I think, Living Space Echo. This, yep, this is Living Space Echo. One of the living spaces that I told you guys about. Which are here for anybody to build in and do whatever they want with it. So, this guy is clearly building some awesome sandstone creation in this large plot here. I'm not sure if why he took up such a large plot. I guess he was allowed to. Yeah. They, uh, living spaces are, um, let's see, yep, they have a smooth stone base and then grass on top of it. So the grass sort of makes it feel like they're outside and then the smooth stone is sort of like the barrier that says, no, you can't dig lower than this. So it's a handy little, yeah, place to settle down and have your little house. So I'm gonna, last place I'm gonna show you on level D, level B, excuse me, B as in boy or bravo, um, is the resource area, the new resource area that is the location of all our resources. Huh, who would have thunk it? Been here, it's just a series of buildings. Um, sort of reminds me of what District 12 would look like from the Hunger Games. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. And I don't know, it just seems like a barren place Baron isn't not a bad thing, but yeah. So it has all these different places: the food, the tools, the carpentry, the miscellaneous resources, furnaces, wool, lockers, glass shop, farming, and stone shop. Um, let's see. Yes, they, yeah, that's all there is. And so there's just a bunch of stone in here. I'm guessing. Not any right. Yep, there's some right there. And all this is used to construct the pyramid. So this is a farming place. That guy's new on the server. His name's Glacier Phoenix. He's been a, I think he's been a pretty good help so far. So I will guard my sword to him. So yeah. Um, this is going to be the visitor center, which I don't really know what that is. But now we will head down to level A and I guess the stopping point for this first look at Oceana. Back there's the uh, Arrivals Concourse that I told you guys about. Or that we came in on. Mm, no, this is the wrong way. Is there any way to go down to level A? Please let me down. I don't know how to go. There it is. This way. So, here we go. We're heading down to the final and, well, the final place on the tour. This is the Spleef Stadium that I mentioned before to you all. Um, Spleef tournaments will be held here. If you don't know what Spleef is, it is a competition where typically two players are standing on an easily diggable floor, such as snow or dirt. And they're armed with several golden shovels, which have the, oh god, there are mobs. I'm going to shoot them because I'm a jerk. Not really. I'm just afraid of them, and I don't want them to hurt. What the heck? Um, and they are armed with several golden shovels, and the object is to dig the other person's footing out from underneath of him. So if I were to go against my friend player A, my goal is to make him fall into a pit of lava or something of the like. Sounds kind of morose, don't you think? But yeah. So this was the Spleef Stadium. Oh god, there's three creepers. I'm going to leave now. I do not want to blow this place up. I forget who this was built by. I could easily check it out if you guys give me a second. Uh, and I can't sprint because I'm hungry again. So, yeah. This Spleef Stadium was built, it was one of, actually one of the first structures in Oceana, outside of the nodes and things like that. Um, there's no name on it, so I'm just going to head east. 
which if that's north, this way is east, or will be east. These are more living spaces, I'm pretty sure. Yep, yeah, that's Living Space Lima, one of the very first living spaces ever constructed on the Oceana Mega Pyramid. So let's head this way. The last place that I'm going to wrap up is the park dedicated to Paul Miller, the guy that I told you about, who inspired everything for the pyramid. So he, his park is over here. It was some of the first ground laid for the structure outside of the original dig shaft and the original resource hut, I think, which were just outside the area where I will leave you guys. So as I told you guys, it's Paul J. Miller Park. And this was something that I worked pretty hard on, along with um, a guy named Bro Daddy. And we worked on this together to landscape it and to build some structures in it. So Bro Daddy built these bridges and did this stream. It goes all the way around the park. Eh, lag. And actually starts with that waterfall and ends with that waterfall, as well as that water fixture over there. He built this as one of the first structures in here. It is Paul Miller's uh, Minecraft skin, or the top third of it. And it's completely hollow, so if you guys ever want to get on here and leave a message to him, you guys can sneak in there. I wasn't the one who told you that. But as I said, it's Paul J. Miller tribute, constructed by Bro Daddy. The park has a couple trees in it, and this giant fountain which is my pride and joy because I sort of built this myself. I was pretty proud of it. Because it was really my first contribution, first mega contribution to the pyramid. So we're getting some lag again, I'll turn around. So I'll read out the inscription to you guys. So this fountain was constructed and planned by Scipio as a tribute to Paul J. Miller, a senior editor of The Verge. So I was kind of happy with this. And it's four source blocks, culminates down here. Sort of reminds me of what I imagine Venice to be like. I haven't been there yet, I really want to go. It sounds like a pretty city, except for apparent pollution. Not my opinion, just what I've heard. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna wrap up your guys' first look at Oceana here. Um, this is my first YouTube video, in case you guys didn't check out my channel beforehand. Um... So, really, that's all I have for you guys. In case you guys saw anything that was embarrassing to people who were chatting, um, don't embarrass them by bringing it up. Nothing that they said was really serious. Um, other than that, if you guys liked this video, you should comment on it, maybe subscribe to me. I'm getting a new computer very soon, so I will be able to make more videos with increasing um, frequency so i'm going to probably start my own let's play and stuff like that so if you guys like this again subscribe and i promise i will not um, let you guys down more stuff will be coming shortly and i guess that's it thanks for watching y'all i will see you in two weeks